Well, last night, one of NASCAR's crown jewel events, the longest race of the season, the Coca-Cola 600, got rain shortened. It's causing a lot of controversy and a lot of talks all over social media. So I figured I'd come on here and give my opinion on the Coca-Cola 600 and go through the events of the race. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think of the Coca-Cola 600 and the way it ended? Plus, give me any improvements I can make on the channel. All right, I'm going to start by saying this. Some of you may have noticed that I've been keeping up with my channel that I did not post a post-race breakdown video last night. I was planning on posting one, but the way that race finished plus... I had a couple of drinks, so that video would have sounded something kind of like this. Obviously, I was very upset and disappointed about that finish. But we're going to continue to talk about that finish and how I feel about it. And I want to get everybody else's thoughts about it in the comments. I want to go through the part of the race that we did get. And then also I want to say this. Happy Memorial Day to everyone. Hope everybody's having a great Memorial Day. I'm having a good day. I also had a good Sunday for the most part up, up until the way it finished, which was unfortunate. But I just wanted to wish everybody... A great holiday, and I hope everybody's having a phenomenal day. But let's start talking about the Coca-Cola 600, one of the crown jewel events for the NASCAR Cup Series, also the longest race on the schedule, 600 miles at Charlotte Motor Speedway, considered to be the home track of NASCAR, 400 laps around Charlotte Motor Speedway. This race has been one of the best races during the season the last couple of years with the next gen car you've heard me on this channel before i've been very harsh on the next gen car when it comes to super speedways when it comes to short tracks and road courses but at the intermediate tracks the speedways the mile and a half this car does wonders and we've had some really great races this year in this car we've also had some really bad races obviously but we've had some great races on the intermediate tracks especially kansas a couple weeks ago phenomenal like i mentioned before the last two coca-cola 600s have been amazing on this track i'd say maybe 10 years ago most fans and teams were asking for charlotte motor speedway to lose one of its two dates but then they came up with the idea of building the roval because charlotte motor speedway wanted to keep both dates have the coca-cola 600 and then have the race in the fall be on the road course well after the last two coca-cola 600s a lot of those same people have changed their minds and they want charlotte motor speedway the oval to have two dates once again there was a lot of excitement going into this race a lot of hype going into this race not just because of those factors i just mentioned but also because of kyle larson kyle larson attempting the double 1100 miles racing the indianapolis 500 and the coca-cola 600 so for a lot of people including myself i'm gonna i'm gonna include myself in this so many people before the season even started circled this race as the race of the year this race right here could potentially be the best race we get all season because of all the hype because of all the excitement and because of the phenomenal racing we get there there was some chatter going into this race, though, that it could potentially be pushed back a half an hour, maybe even a full hour, to wait on Kyle Larson to finish the Indianapolis 500 in case it got rain delayed. While the Indianapolis 500 did get delayed, it got delayed a little bit longer than NASCAR were hoping on, so they were not going to wait on Kyle Larson. 
forced Kyle Larson, Team Hendrick, McLaren, everybody over there involved in this Indy 500 Coca-Cola 600 effort had to make a decision. And the decision was made for Kyle Larson to run the Indianapolis 500, not leave early to go to the Coca-Cola 600. So we had already some big news, some big drama before the race even started because Larson is not going to be able to start the race in the number five car for Hendrick Motorsports. So who do they get to drive the car? They bring in Justin Allgaier. Justin Allgaier being a veteran of the Xfinity Series, also has raced a good amount of Cup Series races in his day, has never really had a great opportunity and great equipment. I remember he took over a Brickyard 400 for Jimmy Johnson one year and got taken out really early on in the event. So it was nice to see that Justin Allgaier was going to get an opportunity, but at the same time, it really hurt because I know Larson put his heart and soul into this effort. I will be talking a little bit more about Larson later, but I'm also making a separate video talking about yesterday and Kyle Larson's double duty efforts. All right, now let's get to the race itself. The Coca-Cola 600, 400 laps, Charlotte Motor Speedway. Of course, you had Ty Gibbs on the pole, getting his first career pole in the Cup Series. Congratulations to him. And he's shown a lot of speed early on in the event. Was out front leading laps, looked really strong. Is this the day that Ty Gibbs gets his first career victory in the NASCAR Cup Series? Pretty early on in the event, we saw a couple of drivers that really shown that they had more speed than the rest of the field. I would say Ty Gibbs was one of those drivers, especially very early on in the event. William Byron had great speed early on in the event. He made this amazing amazing pass through the grass it was a fantastic move from william byron i was really impressed by that brad keselowski brad keselowski i thought he had really great speed as well christopher bell christopher bell led a bunch of laps in this race looked dominant at points in this race then the last driver i would say could have potentially been the fastest and that was tyler reddick Tyler Reddick, of course, being penalized before the start of the event, had to start at the back and actually had to serve a pass-through penalty at the start of the race. When he came back out on track, he actually came back out on track right in front of the leaders. He did a great job of holding off the leaders and actually began to pull away. And throughout the beginning portions of this race was moving throughout the field. In the beginning portion of the 600-mile event, Christopher Bell... I think was the best car and shown the most speed. I think Brad Keselowski could have been tied with them, maybe maybe even a little bit quicker. But Clean Air definitely played a big factor in this race. I think Clean Air played a bigger factor in this event than it has the last two years. I don't think I saw as much passing this year as I've seen in the last two years. Not saying at all it was a bad race, but it, I don't think it was as good as the last two Coca-Cola 600s. But that being said, I did see a good amount of racing in the Coca-Cola 600. But one of the things I enjoy the most about the Coca-Cola 600 is a lot of drivers that you see having a lot of speed early on in the event. There's at least a few, if not all of those drivers, will fall off near the end of the event. But at Charlotte Motor Speedway for the Coca-Cola 600, with how long the event is, the track goes through a number of changes, whether that's rubber buildup, track temperature, varying conditions in general when it comes to the track surface. You'll always see drivers in the Coca-Cola 600 in those last 100, 150 laps really begin to figure out the racetrack and figure out what the strong suit is for their car. And unfortunately, we weren't really able to see any of those changes as the race got rain shortened and won by Christopher Bell. Congrats to C. Bell. I really like C. Bell and in the beginning portion of that race, I considered him to have the fastest car. But who knows what could have happened in those last 150 laps. One thing I thought could potentially happen in those last 150 laps was that Kyle Larson could have made a run and could have had a great finish in the race, if not winning the event. Justin Allgaier, in a substitute role, has not been in a cup car in quite a while, ended up finishing 13th. Very impressive by Justin Allgaier. And I was keeping an eye on what Allgaier was doing throughout the event. Allgaier was struggling early on in the event. Actually went a lap down for a certain amount of time. 
got back on the lead lap and was continuously finding pace in that car throughout the day. He was really beginning to figure out how to run this next-gen car. I was extremely impressed with his performance, but just think, what if Larson got in that car for those last 150 laps? I don't know if he would have won the event, but I think he definitely would have gotten a top five and made some crazy moves to try to get to the front. They ended up calling the race at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. It was very disappointing, not just for me and a lot of fans at home. The fans at the track were heartbroken. They were they were upset as they deserved to be upset. Charlotte Motor Speedway had some heavy rain for a little bit. They began to dry the racetrack. It looked like they were going to get back racing. The pit road was completely dry. They were still working on drying the racetrack. And I would say they're around 70, maybe 80% finished with the track surface. Just a couple of minutes before, Bob Pockris made a tweet and it really seemed like they were going to get back racing. It might not happen for another hour, hour and a half, but they seemed like they were very committed to continuing this race because it didn't look like we were going to get any more rain after this. And they already put in the effort to dry most of the racetrack. But to get back to the fans at the racetrack, a lot of fans that went to the event yesterday have been posting that they are very upset with the events that happened. A lot of fans waiting it out, being told that they're going to get back racing and without any rain and the track pretty much almost 100% dry at this point, just to be told, go home, we're not finishing the longest race of the year. Christopher Bell is your winner. They all started booing. They all started booing the decision, Christopher Bell, whatever way you want to look at it. And it's really unfortunate and it's unfair to the fans. It's unfair to Christopher Bell as well. Christopher Bell had a great race and at that point in the race, I guess he's the deserving winner. Then you have Kyle Larson who rushed to get back to the track. You see him hopping off the golf cart before it's even stopped and running to his pit stall to get ready to hop into the race car just to have the rain come once again mess with his day even more it was messing with them in indianapolis and it messed with them in charlotte not even get an opportunity to run a lap and i think that's gonna potentially create a lot of controversy because i think he is gonna get a waiver and i'm gonna be talking more about that in my kyle larson video as well it was just a really disappointing way to end the greatest day in motorsports i did also vlog most of my day yesterday vlogging the events of the races and I'm going to be making a video coming out later this week on that but the greatest day in motorsports you start off with the Monaco Grand Prix then you go to the Indianapolis 500 then you go to the Coca-Cola 600 and I'd say the race day started off pretty strong with the Monaco Grand Prix I think we all know that Monaco doesn't produce the greatest racing it's really hard almost impossible to pass at Monaco so I did not have very high expectations going into this race. And you didn't see really hardly any passing. I'm pretty sure they said the top 10 finishers of the event were the top 10 starters of the Grand Prix. But you had a drama-filled lap one. You had so many instants go on in lap one. Then the rest of the race was pretty much typical Monaco. Then you had the home track driver of Charles Leclerc win the race, win the Monaco Grand Prix. That was an epic and it just kind of filled your heart with joy sort of moment seeing Charles Leclerc win at his home track. He's been close a couple of times now and finally got the job done at his home track. It was it was great to see. And then you moved on to the Indianapolis 500, which got rain delayed by a couple of hours, which was awful. And the day was already beginning to turn out a little bit bad because then all the talk came out about well, is Larson going to race the Coke 600 or the Indy 500? He ended up racing the Indy 500, and you had a phenomenal race. You had a phenomenal race and a fantastic finish and a great celebration by New Garden. And then you move on to the Coca-Cola 600, which is usually the race I enjoy the most and I like the most. And overall, I enjoyed the racing that I saw in the Coca-Cola 600 when they were racing. But just the way they ended it when they definitely could have continued it, it sits sour with me for sure. I had company over and we were all waiting for the race to continue because we all thought the race was going to continue, not just me and the company I had over, everybody on Twitter, 
all the people that stayed at the racetrack for a couple of hours hoping they would get the race continued because it seemed like a sure thing. It, se it seemed like a sure thing that they were going to resume the race. There wasn't really any question about them resuming the race up until it didn't get resumed. The fact that everybody thought they were going to go back racing, including the commentators, including all the NASCAR personalities, everybody at the track, all the drivers, everybody thought they were going to go back racing, including the number 20 crew. The number 20 crew, Joe Gibbs, everybody was really surprised when NASCAR officials declared the race official. It made me think that Fox is the real culprit on why the plug was pulled. You already know who it is. It's your boy. Secure the juice, and I got major juice. I saw people immediately coming at NASCAR asking, Why, NASCAR? Why did you do this? Why did you pull the plug on the Coca Cola 600 when the track was almost dry? And I don't think NASCAR or Charlotte Motor Speedway had any say in why this race got shortened. I said, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. With the way the events went down last night, all signs and everything points the direction at Fox. That Fox pulled the plug on this event for whatever reason. And I did it because I liked Order. it. Hell, I loved it. I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm just itching, I'm, I'm, I'm itching to do it again. Whether it was a money thing, whether it was NASCAR has had this happen a bunch of times this season, maybe Fox is tired of extending their time slot. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm pretty confident that Fox pulled the plug on this race and it's very unfortunate, very disappointing. Fox, in my opinion, has been awful at their coverage the last two years. And if they are the ones that pulled the plug on this, that's just another thing that they're doing that's holding back and pulling down the sport. I've said it a couple of times that I'm going to make a NASCAR on Fox video, but at this point I, I actually am. It's going to come out later this week. I'm going to work on it here in a couple of days and I'm just going to go over all the issues and the problems I find with NASCAR on Fox, especially now that we're about to get back to NASCAR and on NBC, which I do prefer NASCAR on NBC, even though I don't think NBC does the greatest job with their coverage either, especially when they're putting most of the races on USA. That's always pretty disappointing to see. I think this year they got some more races on NBC than last, which is great. And another thing that made me feel this way, and I found this out a little bit later on in the night, I was seeing discussions on Twitter about it, and I was seeing a couple people talk about it that apparently nascar on fox the commentators actually heard about the race getting rain shortened before christopher bell which i found extremely odd because if you've noticed with most rain shortened scenarios either the driver and the nascar on fox crew hear the news at the exact same time that the race is now official or honestly in most scenarios you see the winner and the team begin to celebrate and then one of the commentators come over the mic five or ten seconds later oh we got word race is official so and so is your winner and the race is over well what had happened last night nascar on fox mike joy the crew over there came over the mic and said that the race was over and Christopher Bell had not known that he had won the race yet and then found out after the announcement was made on Fox. And I found that to be extremely odd, shady even. That's suspicious. That's weird. The reason that was given by NASCAR on why the event was rain shortened and they didn't continue to dry Charlotte Motor Speedway was because of humidity. Why you always lying? Oh my God. Stop lying. They said it was because of humidity and that the track would not be finished drying till after 1 a.m. Eastern time. So you're saying the race could not continue because it was too humid, which made the track drying process a little bit more difficult for y'all. I just... 
no, I don't see that. I don't I don't think that was the reason why. I've never heard of humidity being a reason why the race ended so late, especially when they were pretty much done. I don't think it would have taken them an hour and a half to finish up what was ever left on the track surface. I think maybe an hour because the track surface was pretty much complete. If you look at pictures and videos of the track surface when they called the race, it was pretty much complete. One thing I also found very interesting about the broadcast after they announced that the race is over and that Christopher Bell is the winner, I think they may be shown the track one time. I don't even think they show they showed it one time. I think they just showed Pit Road and Christopher Bell and his team celebrating. I don't think they ever showed the actual track surface after they made that announcement. I could be wrong. I might have missed it. I, I could be wrong on that. But I, I don't think they even show showed the track surface. I, I think they didn't want to show the track surface. They didn't want to get fans upset. But the track, from what I saw from fans, looked not 100% dry, but pretty close to being 100% dry. And that pit road was 100% dry. Even, even places in the infield, in the infield that don't have the air titans on it, were dry. And I, that's bonkers nascar has made some really bad decisions in their day ultimately like i said i don't think this was their decision but they're the fall guy if it wasn't their decision and whoever made this decision it has to be one of the worst decisions in nascar history because you have a lot of upset people you even have jeff gluck's poll i think it's like 75 percent no on if you liked this race and like i said it was not a bad race. It was a very good and entertaining race. Maybe not as entertaining as the last two events, but we also didn't get to finish the event. And the way it ended left a sour taste in everybody's mouth, including mine. Everybody is really upset. Everybody's pissed off. Language. Let me just say it flat out like that. Everybody is pissed off. Everybody is very upset. It was awful, a horrible way to end the greatest day in motors in motorsports. And it's, it's unfortunate. And like I said earlier, there's no one I feel worse for than the fans at the racetrack. The fans that camped at the track, they spent good money on, on either renting campers or bringing their campers to campsites, to getting tickets, to getting infield passes, doing all these special things during Memorial Day weekend, a holiday weekend, then just have them wait at the track for a couple hours when you seem fully committed to going back racing just to pull the rug out from under them right before the track was completed it sits wrong with it sits really wrong with me mainly because of that i'm very hurt for myself as well because like i said i did have company over and we were all looking forward to the end of this race and it was just really depressing and disappointing having the race end like that and i was thinking earlier after i woke up I was trying to think before I looked on my phone or looked at anything. I'm like, who won that race? Because I honestly forgot who even won the race last night because I was just so upset with the way it ended. Coca-Cola 600 is usually one of my favorite races of the year, even if it's not the most exciting race because there's always strategy involved. You always see comers and goers, and it's a crown jewel event. It's the Coca-Cola 600. Any driver that wins that event has bragging rights for the rest of their career. Plus, they have a huge celebration after they win it because they know how important that race is. But those those were my final thoughts on on that subject. And I appreciate anybody who's who's watching this video. Leave any comments down below. What did you think about the end of this race? If you also noticed, this is a little bit more of a raw video for me. I don't think I usually do these types of videos. I rant here and there, but this one's a little bit more on the raw side of things. And I'm just kind of saying what's in my heart and what's coming out. I'm not really not I'm not really planning anything that I'm saying clearly in this video because I'm probably stuttering here and there. But whatever comes to my mind is what I'm going to say on this video. But ultimately, I wanted to make this video just to get everybody else's thoughts because I'm seeing a lot of the same opinions as me. And I'm curious on what other people's thoughts are. The only people I see agreeing with this decision are people that have to agree with this decision because they're either paid by Fox or by NASCAR or by both. It is what it is. Give me all your thoughts down below, no matter how harsh they are, because I'm pretty harsh on this decision and I'm 
interested to see how, how harsh you are on this decision. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, a.k.a. Racing Boy Short, saying peace.